Well, um, I find myself between two old-fashioned idealists and realists. <laughs> Let me see how a modern, um, modern world um, opportunists will look at the opportunities that are there in the region. So um, um, the mixed and complex messages from the exercise that we did in Indonesia and other countries that we work in. And I was trying to think how best I can spend next five minutes with you, how to look at some of the news that comes from the region, from the Asian region. And that's very diverse and very complex. We have a new government in India. The first cabinet meeting was the emergency cabinet meeting in India. And that was about a drought in Gujarat. Ironically, the second cabinet meeting in India, again under the new government, was about flooding, both climate-induced disasters. And while I'm speaking to you right now, on uh, television news in uh, Pakistan is flashing that 8 million people are affected by the floods. And this is the fifth uh, year of consecutive high floods uh, in that part of the world. And that, that establishes in, in, in the policymakers' mind that climate-induced disasters are more fre frequent, more ferocious, and, and the cost is increasing and having a very strong impact um, on the development budget or the development agenda. agenda. Now, it also offers, because I wanted to highlight opportunities that come. India, Pakistan had suspended their talks recently, but after this flood, they speak to each other, and that tells me one more message that coming from, from this, this nexus. That is, while most of SDGs are domestic economic agendas, climate change can be transboundary agenda, offers opportunities for regional peace and stability that saves hopefully some, some resources. So these are messages. What is, what, what is the situation in several countries? There are many voices. Our impression is from the uh, discourse that we have had in the region, there's no one dominating voice. Uh, the dispersed voices, there may, be not, there may not be a national consensus that exists at this point, looking at the linkages between climate and, and disaster. There are some very good players, um, pockets of excellence, who are well informed, like Bapinas in, in, in uh, Indonesia, or like MPI in Vietnam. Uh, MPI have spearheaded the debate, and now they have been able to leverage one and a half billion dollars for the development agenda, highlighting the climate nexus in that sense. Now, the moment we go beyond these um, small pockets in, in, in Asian countries, we see that the governments continue to work in silos. And SDGs debate in most ministries of pl and planning commissions uh, is in isolation of climate discourse. In fact, not just climate discourse, also from HFA2 conversations. I was recently at uh, AMCDR, the ministerial meeting in, in Thailand, in preparation of HFA2, whereas most delegates were speaking about integrating DRR into climate, they were at a, at a total loss how to, how to integrate climate discourse into DRR conversations. So it continues to be a fragmented conversation uh, in all these three domains, and 2015 is a very, very important year. So the debate in many ways is, continues to be in silos, and the capacity weakens as you go beyond central ministries and the federal ministries <laughs> into the provinces, let alone the districts where the, mostly the action is. So in many ways, there, there's, a, there's a disconnect between the realities on the ground and the discourse that is happening in open working group. Whereas um, we see very positive developments coming in 17 goals uh, from the open working group and 169 targets. But the conversations on indicators have not even begun to happen. And that is where the real challenge is on the ground uh, in terms of capacities and resources. Two more points and then then I, I can conclude. And one point coming from Indonesia very strongly, if we listen to it care, uh, carefully, uh, yes, some people will argue in favor of standalone target, but many more people will argue 
in terms of integrating climate into into other targets as well, health, education, disasters, agriculture, water, and so on and so forth. And that is really the challenge. Um, so how best we retain the standalone target on climate change? The argument was, while at the same time we make meaningful progress in terms of real integration into, into uh, targets, other targets as well. And the second point that I wanted to make, um, there were several points made um, how ambitious the, carbon, uh, the climate targets are. So far, the conversation was they were vague, uh, less defined, and probably less demanding in terms of concrete MRVs and outcomes. So while there's a, there's a push for more precise targets, more ambitious targets, at the same time, there's a huge big lag with capacities and competencies and resources and technologies that exist on the ground. And the final point I, I can make in this regard, um, some very senior people, uh, people like Kamil Salim, who still are well regarded uh, in Indonesian politics uh, and in the climate debate, um, were very emphatic that there needs to be a unified framework. Unified framework that covers adaptation, mitigation, uh, as well as DRR-related concerns. Now, in many, many ways, if the cost of development is increasing, this kind of unified framework probably provides us a window of opportunity whereby we can refine our indicators in the next stage and see how best we can bring climate-related targets into uh, other other goals as well thank you very much mr chair